Good afternoon. I'm here to talk about a book. It's called Freaks, Geeks, and Asperger Syndrome, and the person that wrote it was Luke Jackson. This was written back in 2002, and you can readily find it at Barnes & Noble. It's a self-help book written by a 13-year-old boy, and it's all his opinion and the experiences he's had at the ripe old age of 13, but he kind of talks as if he's 30. He thinks he's an adult, but he actually has a lot to learn, and he talks about basically dating and his family and different things, positives, negatives, and all the things that he's come across since he was in school in the past couple years. He talks about his family in the beginning of the book and how other kids in his family do have either sensory issues or they do have are diagnosed with autism. So he does kind of get that into the book also and make some similarities between himself and his brothers and sisters who have other kind of issues going on. Mom is very hands-on. She seems to be doing a lot with diet and interactive with the school and things like that and talking to him about his disability, which they don't really consider disability, which is great. I thought that was awesome. He also talks about the diagnosis and that getting a diagnosis is really good as young as possible. His mom didn't tell him for two years or three years and he he said he would have rather known and known in school why he was a little bit different than the other kids. And he also said it's easier to get therapies and help when you do have a diagnosis and they can connect it and figure out what's actually going on with you. He also has mentioned his parents a lot of this. Some of it, he says, these are for the kids. This is some information for you. This is for the adults. This is for the parents. He said to accept your kid no matter what, that even if they are a little different. He also mentioned ABA, uh, and he used a lot of technical terms in here, which is awesome because the kids are going to be starting to go to their IEP meetings, and they will be invited in, and then at least if they do read this book, they'll understand some of the jargon. There's a glossary at the end, so maybe they kind of understand some of the things that the doctors are saying, some of the things that the teachers are saying in the IEP meetings. He also said that some parents choose not to tell the teachers that the child has either autism like his brother or Asperger's like him, and he thought it was very important. So then if he had any quirkiness or some things that are different, at least it could be explained and the teachers wouldn't be coming down on him quite as hard because they could work with him to kind of adapt to it instead of not knowing what's going on. He also talked about um, friends and having time to get along with friends and how it's hard with be having Asperger's, but he also came to realize that he, that friends are friends. Friends are who they are. They're going to accept you for who you are. I guess he was trying to change and become different for these kids and to try to fit in with them. And then he came to the realization that, you know, at 13, that friends are friends and he is who he is. And if they want to like him for who he is, then they're a true friend, which is a great, great, um, it's awesome. You know, it's good to know, especially at that age going into high school. He also said Asperger's creates obsessions. His obsession was create uh, computers, and his other obsession was PlayStation. He also talked a lot about his mom, how she kind of yanked him out of those obsessions, and that she explained to him that he needed to have other interests in life, not just those, that when he was on those, he wouldn't even hear her talk. He wouldn't hear the siblings talk, that he gets so obsessed with those. So she really seemed to help him with that. He didn't say anything about therapies that help, but he talked about a lot about his mom. He also talked about fine motor, that he had a hard time writing. Uh, coming up with stories and actually doing the writing, the fine motor was an issue for him. He thought about girls. He talked about a little bit about girls, and he said uh, girls on the Asperger syndrome, he found that they listened to a song once and that they knew all the words, which he wasn't sure if that was part of it or if it's just the girls that he knew, but it was kind of interesting. He also had collections. His collection was pencils. He Ooh, sorry. He had a collection of pencils and he said all Asperger's children or adults that maybe they have obsessions, collections, things like that. And they're all different for each person. Every person's different. He talked about his brother. His brother had more sensory issues and he didn't have any of those. He did talk about eye contact. He said eye contact was hard for him because and making friends because they didn't understand why he didn't make eye contact. He talked about the five senses, taste, smell, he said tasting and hearing didn't really change for him too much, um, but he kind of really did hit on all those bases. Um, he did talk about gluten-free diet. He was a very picky eater, and mom tried to give him different dietary options to maybe help with the Asperger syndrome to kind of lighten the, the symptoms of that, and he said some of them worked, some of them didn't. 
He also had major sleeping issues. He had a whole chapter on sleeping issues and gave 20 suggestions on for kids his age that do have sleeping issues, what are things that can be done. And he also made other suggestions about how parents can help to do that. Dating, he said, was very hard for him. Now he's 13, so keep that in mind. He does have a lot of learning to do, but he said dating was very hard for him, especially because of the eye contact issues. And he said he's very literal, uh, as most Asperger's children are. He also said very clear. Be very clear in your instructions for these kids. He said teachers should be very clear. Uh, his mom should be very clear because of the him being very so literal that he does not really think out of the box too much. He needs very clear instructions. He also said that he could read on his own very, very early in life, and he wasn't sure how that happened, but he thought it was probably due to the Asperger's, that he learned a little bit different, but he picked it up. But he wasn't sure how he picked it up, so that was kind of interesting and intuitive from him. He's not good at sports. He said he has poor coordination, and he also has some body space issues. He said he gets too close to people sometimes. He, like, walks around and follows people a little too close sometimes. So he also said maybe that has something to do with not being good at sports, or it could just be from the Asperger's. He wasn't sure. He also talked about bullying. Bullying was an issue with the students around him, with friends. He also mentioned bullying as teachers, that some of the teachers really verbally put him down, which was awful, that they would put him down because of the Asperger's and some of the quirkiness instead of trying to help him work through it. He did eventually, his mom got him into Taekwondo and he said his confidence really soared with that and it really, really helped. Now, jumping, jumping into being the teacher mode uh, as opposed to just reviewing the book, the book was excellent. It was great for kids at uh, middle school and high school because he was 13. He's kind of in the middle. Taekwondo um, really helped, so that was kind of neat. But if I was to jump in the teacher mode, I would definitely have a lesson where I would have the Asperger child, because they probably know at 13, 14, 15 that they do have it, and that they are a little different. So I would have all the different things that are bothersome to them. I wouldn't even use symptoms, but I would say the things that are bothersome to them and write down all those things that are, make them a little bit different than other people that they feel. I would have them go back, take a couple days, read the book, and as they were reading book, take some notes. Take some notes about the things that are bothersome to this little boy, some of the things that made him a little different, some of the things that he found made him a little quirkier. And then I would have him come, ba come back, and then in class we would talk about compare the two. Compare your list, compare his list, what things make you different, and what things are the same. Because there was a lot of same things that are very typical of these kids. So I feel that... Uh, middle school, high school kids can feel that they're not so alone, that there are other people, especially this little boy that wrote the book, but there's a lot of people that have Asperger's. It's very common anymore, especially with the autism and the high functioning autism and things like that. There's a lot of kids out there, so it makes them not feel so alone. I would then kind of, and I always try to end on a positive note, so I would definitely have them after that take those lists of bothersome things and pick two maybe, and have them go through and what makes, what's a positive thing? Why are, such as him reading at a very early age, or the girls, if they could hear a song and memorize it and, you know, go from there. So what are the positive things about the Asperger's? What are two of the really positive, how can we put a positive spin on that? So that's how I would do more of a extension activity with that. Thanks. Have a good day.